Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can everyone hear me and see my screen? All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So let's get this party started here. Let's see uh, what we have in place. Um, Okay, so we have still space for a few people. Yeah, I've changed the background color. We've upgraded our forecast over at uh, 4X Watchers, so um, we, we changed things around completely. We've made our forecast even tighter and, uh, you know, things like that. So, you know, things are looking good for that. Um, <coughs> um, actually, let me notify people in the chat room that there is still a little bit of space. Okay, and for those of you who could not get in, I'm so sorry. Um, this is um, recorded and it will be on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Please like the video and comment below if uh, you enjoy it towards the end. So, morning Joginder. Um, okay, so let's get started here. Alright, let's uh, begin one by one. Now, how many of you guys remember how we do our NFP trading strategy? Uh, well, actually, let me ask you guys this thing. Who, who's, is it uh, first time with us doing an NFP here? Okay. New, new. Okay, so we got, we got quite a, quite a bit of new people here. First time, first time. Okay. All right. Now, with our NFP, yes, we're going to head to the daily chart first and, uh, we pretty much had what five out of six last month we had a loss towards the end of the year um, we weren't able to predict it and uh, it went the other way so now it's the beginning of the year let's see if this makes a difference or not but uh, usually every other time we've been able to catch it so let's take a look at it little by little and we'll take it from there now it's 9.03 uh, p.m. my time it's 8.03 a.m. New York City time which means in 27 minutes we have the NFP let's go ahead and do our research take it nice and easy be calm no rush alright so first things first let's head out to the daily chart okay let me remove these lines for you sorry Okay, based on the last candle, what do we know? Trend continuation long and it's been met. Okay, if we see the last pattern here, it's not quite clear. It's just saying that yes, it is going north and it's already gone north. Okay, there's no other piece of information there. Okay, let's take a look. So this one is done. Yeah, the sound will be a little bit on and off uh, due to my connection, but uh, it is being recorded, not to worry. Um, if there's any issues, try logging out and logging back in, see if that helps. Okay, so yeah, I do have a little lag, but uh, just bear with me. So yeah, Euro USD is done. Let's move on to Pound. Okay. Pound, daily chart. Okay, what do we know about pound? So trend continuation long, ha is it actually met? It's crossed the tail by one pip. Okay, so we still have some uh, potential here. We still have some potential. Okay, so we have one pair telling us that uh, um, we are possibly good for a long. All right, let's go on to CAD. US dollar CAD, let's take a look at the daily chart. What does the daily chart tell us? What do we know based on the last candle of the daily chart? So it's a very large trend continuation pattern, a big tail on top, smaller tail on the bottom, 
Okay, it's saying short and it has not been met. You can see the current candle for today, it has not surpassed it. So this is still pending. And this is even beautiful, it's going with our forecast. So um, this is also good for a short. Okay, now we have two pairs officially that have not been met. Okay, let's take a look at Swiss franc. Let's take a look at the daily charts, get an idea. Okay, last candle. We have this little uh, false exhaustion, which means a trend continuation pattern and the market has continued. So that's already gone. Okay. So nothing we can do here. Australian dollar, US dollar. Let's take a look. Aussie dollar is daily chart. Okay. Based on last candle, we have pretty much an indecision candle. Big tail on top, big tail on bottom, and a body in the middle. The market is unaware on which direction to go. Now, next thing, we're pretty much just filling in this gap that we've created from 27th January to 3rd January. You see this big gap right here? The big gap of a mess? We're just pretty much filling in this area. Okay. Oh yeah, um, by the way, for those of you guys um, who wanted this templates, uh, I'll get them for you. I've, I've had them uh, with different colors and stuff like that. I even have some designs for um, some of you females that are uh, with us. So we get some nice light colors for you guys as well. Um, all right. So going back. To, sorry, this one was an indecision, so nothing here on Aussie dollar. Let's take a look at uh, New Zealand dollar on the daily chart. Scroll out. Now, what does a New Zealand dollar tell us? Okay, trend continuation long, and it already has been met. So this is already done. Okay, it's, it's indicating a long... But this long has this issue here, it has this big tail. Now the only problem we have, usually the first Friday of the month is usually the biggest candle of the month for us. We have nothing to compare this NFP to. This is why my, my question in the beginning of the webinar was, will we be able to predict this market just like, or will we have issues like we had in December for end of the year? Now, this is the beginning of the year, and we have no candles to compare this to. I mean, because this comes into pretty much last month's bar chart. Uh, if, if we have some bars here, we, we have something to say that, okay, it's the biggest candle of the month. No information like that. Okay, so in this particular sense, there is a big tail here on the last candle saying it is long, but it's slowing down. The current candle has surpassed it, and it's starting to create a tail. So a little bit of caution on New Zealand dollar. Okay, but it's been met. Euro yen. Let's take a look. Any information on Euro yen? Okay, trend continuation long and it has been met. So this is already done. Okay, it's a nice uh, upward continuation pattern. However, the candle of the last candle is not as good as, for example, something like this. Uh, these are big candles. Now this, the last candle is a pretty small one. So um, a trend continuation pattern for a long, this is already met. So now, uh, and let's also do gold, since you guys like gold. Daily charts. Okay, based on the last candle, which direction? Gold actually says short and pending, so a little caution here. So uh, gold short is still good. Okay, so all in all, coming back to uh, take a look at all this. Now we have how many pairs in total that uh, we were able to confirm? We had pound, we had CAD, 
and gold. That's about it. Everything else has been met. Okay. So, and based on how many guys, uh, the people that have already been in my webinars before, here is your poll. Oh, sorry. There you go. Okay, let's see. We'll give this a couple of minutes to see where the bias is, which direction. Okay, 30 people are saying long, 8 people are saying short. I would wait for the candle to close on the one hour to get a direction. Okay, okay, that's also good. Okay, now, here's the thing. If you are aggressive, what would you do in this particular case? What? Okay, remember, aggressive doesn't mean being stupid, right? If you're aggressive, what be, would be your game plan? Okay, let me put this aside now. Okay, so majority of you guys are saying long. Okay, if you're aggressive, you guys are saying buy, and you guys would pretty much enter um, slightly before the NFP. Okay, now if you're conservative, what would you wait for? You wait for the market to settle. Okay, rule of thumb uh, when it comes to NFP. It takes approximately 30 to 45 minutes for the NFP to settle down, okay? Let the gamblers come in, do their thing, and then once NFP settles down, take a look at the direction it's headed, and that's the direction you're headed for the rest of the day into next week. So, there's two things that you can do. You can enter slightly before the NFP, or you can wait for the NFP. If you're uncertain, you can wait for the NFP to play its role, and then once it settles down, the direction it's in is the direction where you want to trade in for the rest of the day. Okay. So now let's go down to our hourly charts. Okay. How many of you guys are actually going to trade prior to the NFP? Okay, not this time, me, no, yes. Okay, so we have a uh, uh, mixed also. For the, we, we get to see at least um, people who do do it before and people who do do it after. Okay, next thing. Let's take a look at some areas of support and resistance that is above and below current market. So we have a strong idea of which way the markets are actually headed. Okay, so do we have an area of support and resistance below this current price? Okay, let's shrink this up. Do we have data coming in from the past? No, no data here. All we know is we have this level right here. Little teeny weeny level right here has some strength to it, not too much. Okay, because we know that it has resistance and then now it has support and it has one big candle break here, but nothing from the past. We just have this little piece of information same thing happens again here okay this area yet once again here or here is covered again 
So we have these areas, these small areas. Okay. As the market moves, we can uh, keep an eye on them. All right. Now, above the market, obviously, we have no information as well. Seems like the market has halted here. We don't know if it's a strong area or not. Most likely, probably not to break through. It shouldn't be that difficult for it. Now, moving on to pound. Areas above and below. Obviously, the area we're at now is powerful. Why? Because we have a big candle break here, a big candle break here, and this line, this top line of my forecast right here seems to be an ideal spot. Okay? If this area breaks, it needs a big candle to break north. Okay, for this to be valid, which would be going with our forecast. It would make sense. Okay? However, if it goes south, okay, if it goes south, what areas do we have? We have big tails coming out of here. Let's take a look. Is this an area here? Okay, from here all the way up to this line of the bottom of my forecast. Okay, seems like there's some strength here. So, no matter which way pound goes, it needs a lot of strength. Now, it as of right now, it makes more viable sense for it to go north because of how clear it is plus uh, two big candle breaks at the same exact level. Okay, broken both uh, um, top resistance and bottom resistance, or top support and bottom support, both with one shot. So it makes more viable sense to go long in this particular one. US dollar CAD, let's take a look. All right, now, same scenario here, you see this? Big candle break here, big candle break here. That means there's something in between that's quite strong. If I put my long line in between here, let's go back and figure out where this line comes from. What is back there? Okay, here we go. We have some areas here. Can we possibly draw it there? Okay, maybe. Or we can even refine it to here. Okay, let's go further back and see. Is there any more information? Okay. There we go. As you can see, we have some pinpoint touches now that we're uh, covering. Okay, let's fill this up with the bodies here and this big candle break also, covering these bodies and everything. Okay. We have a little range here. If pound goes north, CAD goes short. And if it goes short, it needs a big candle to come down through this area. Okay, which also makes sense because NFP obviously creates big candles. All right, so this is a strong area for it to break. All right, so far it's above it and it's bouncing from it. Okay, and it's hovering right now. Okay, let's take a look at Swiss franc. Swiss franc, big candles coming out of here. There is a strong levels here also. Let's shrink it a little bit. See if there's any data in the past that we can use. Uh, it doesn't seem so. It doesn't seem so. All we know is data on the top. Okay, we have strong areas above our forecasted zone. This forecast are from forexwatchers.com. It's above the forecasted zone. Okay. So <clears throat> if the markets are correlating and if CAD goes down, it will drag down Swiss franc with it as it's a US dollar pair. Okay. Now, Aussie dollar. Big candles here, big candles here. This bottom line of the forecast, strong level. Okay. Going from here to here. This area needs to be broken with strength if it goes short. If it goes long, we have this area here that seems to be the best one. Okay, big candle break to the bottom, big candle break to the top, big candle break to the bottom, support over here, resistance over here. 
needs lots of strength to break through it if it goes north. So in this particular case, we have two sides that tell us the same information. However, take a look at pound today. It's gone sideways, then down, then up. Let's take a look at Aussie dollar. It's gone down, then up, then down, then up, now possibly down again. It's in a straight downtrend. Are we correlating with pound in this one? Possibly not. Possibly not. Okay. What about the New Zealand dollar? Are we correlating with New Zealand dollar? Are our oceanic pairs completely lost their mind? Let's take a look. They're going long, down, up, down, up. It's like a W formation. You know, we don't have this in pound, nor do we have this on Euro USD. Okay. Also, probably um, anti correlation here as well. Okay. However, it is not like Aussie dollar, where Aussie dollar is actually strongly short. Okay. Which direction would you choose for New Zealand dollar if you had to choose? Okay. Short, short. Okay. See, we have this area here. If you want to short, this area seems to be strong. To short through here, you need a strong candle, which makes fair fair and amount of sense. Gold, bouncing off of this area, struggling. Okay, gold is saying short as per our daily candles. Okay, if it goes long, by any chance, this area is strong. Big candles. Okay. We can even refine it further. Even somewhere stronger is here actually. Support, resistance, and now three big candles. So even more powerful up here, which is the reason why it's bouncing around from here. Now, if it wants to break through this, if it wants to go long, it has to go really strong. If it wants to go short, do we have anything strong to for it to go short? Yes, this zone seems to be a strong area. Okay, it needs to break through this at uh, maximum capacity. All right, so we have all these pieces of information. Um, let's move in Euro Yen. Euro Yen is at all time high. All we know is that we have this level of uh, strength here. That's all we know. If it wants to go short, it must break through. If it goes long, um, which area do we have for long? Nothing for long, but uh, short possible this area it could be strong. 125, 25. Okay, so all in all, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the trades also before, just for the sake of an example. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, trade based on the information I see okay some pairs are correlating some pairs are not I'm going to try to pick out the pairs I'm gonna trade all the pairs but I'm gonna to try to pick them out in such a way that um, maybe I can still come out in profit even though it's a hedge okay so we're gonna try it we're gonna try something like that now euro USD which way do you guys think this is headed Long? All right, let's go long on Euro USD. Should we go crazy? Should we do 10 pips? Or uh, let's go long, that's fine. Okay, pound, direction, which way? Well, pound was obviously clear for us uh, saying long and has not been met. So I'm gonna take long on pound as well. Okay, CAD has now touched our zone also direction for CAD CAD was also clear for a short based on uh, the daily charts I'm gonna short this one okay now all the clear ones are done pound and CAD are done now everything else we're doing we're gonna do it based on information that we know okay US dollar Swiss franc since we chose to go long on Euro USD and long on uh, pound and short on CAD, well, 
chances are our Swiss franc will drop because Swiss franc goes really well with Euro USD. Okay. As of right now, we have no hedges. We're doing everything based on two pieces of information, plus we've taken two based on um, assumed correlation. Okay. Aussie dollar, on the other hand, I'm going to take this one as a short. Okay. Because Aussie dollar is not correlating with Euro USD or pound, it's doing something completely opposite. I'm going to short this one. New Zealand dollar. What direction should I take for New Zealand dollar? I'm going to leave this one up to you guys. I'm open to both short and long. Okay, Ahmed says long, Pedro says short. Short, short, short. Okay, many people are saying short. I'm going to go ahead and take this as short. Follow Aussie. Okay, okay, fair enough. Following Aussie dollar on this one. Euro yen direction. long. Okay. Fair enough. I have a bunch of trades. Sorry, we have gold as well. Sorry, we didn't take gold. Gold direction. Short, short, long, long, long. Okay. Gold, um, based on the daily chart tells us short and it has not been met I might have to go with that okay even though my gut instincts are telling me long I might I'm gonna stick to the plan I'm gonna sell okay it's okay now even if uh, it breaks my forecasted zone for a long um, this area is strong Okay, so we can always reverse the pairs later. That's that's fine. Okay, so I have all my pairs running. Uh, approximately 16 pips, um, 15 pips running. Two minutes to NFP. How many of you guys are actually in the trade? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we have quite a bit of people. Okay, and maybe half of you guys are standing aside waiting for the market to settle, which is good. Which is good. It's always good to be safe than sorry, right? Okay. All right, so two minutes to candle close. Uh, I'm sorry, the two minutes to uh, NFP release. It's at 8.30. It's currently 8.29 a.m. New York City time. Within 60 seconds, we'll uh, start to see movement. Okay, running at 29 pips on my end right now. Which pair do you guys want to watch? Should we watch uh, Euro? As it's the most common pair. Let me get rid of this line. I think you should be on gold. Well, we can watch gold also, that's fine. Okay, let's take a look at the timings. 10 seconds. Forty pips running. Okay, the market has moved. Okay, gold shot long. Okay, let's wait and see. Currently running at the hundred and Five pips negative. Let's move on through. Let's take a look. Euro USD doing well. 
pound doing well so far CAD okay pushing through okay remember we have this area here it needs to break through so eyes are on CAD to see can it break through does it have that pressure Swiss franc sorry too thin okay Swiss franc trying to push south Okay. As of right now, we are mainly negative due to gold. Without gold, we're only down at 27 pips or 20 pips or so. Aussie dollar pushing north. It's trying to go north from here. So we're going to watch these areas, how it breaks. Okay. New Zealand dollar headed long. It's correlating with Euro USD and pound. And Euro Yen. It pushed down once again towards this level, but now it's pushing long. Okay. Our first four currencies are coming out just fine. And then our remaining four are not. Let's wait and see. It's only two minutes into uh, into the trade. Let the dust settle. So does everyone understand how we actually analyze the NFP markets? Basically, we look at daily charts and then we check what has been met what hasn't been met if you do not know how to read candlesticks i think we do have uh, a webinar on our youtube channel which is uh, youtube.com forward slash urban forex and it uh, discusses one webinar of candlesticks so we go over that in there okay Really not much data, right? Seems to be very slow. Any other information that's releasing with uh, NFP or s very soon that may be um, a strong move? Uh, will you be going long now since your gold is losing? Well, let's take a look at our gold areas. One of our areas for gold is around here. Okay, if it is able to break this area, then of course we would. I would have to consider changing directions. Okay, well, my forecast has been holding. And that was the initial uh, view from this morning um, when we drew this. But uh, based on our strategy, if if my strategy tells me one thing, I must stick to it. So. Okay, unemployment rate is negative 7.9, okay. Bernanke might have to press control P. Okay, five minutes into this, markets are now picking directions. Okay, seems like gold wants to break through this barrier.
surprisingly Aussie dollar is not going long though Euro USD also slow to go long pound also slow CAD going short which is good but still struggling to break this area so a little bit of caution still struggling to break this Swiss franc hovering Aussie dollar is good and New Zealand dollar also still hovering Euro yen still there only thing that moved is gold everybody else is still at or around the same area because if you can see if you remove gold from this picture you're pretty much at 10 pips uh, negative so it's still around uh, spread prices Uh, Madrid's after candle close we have the direction for the rest of the day right yes after candle close or like pretty much uh, 15 minutes after candle close 30 to 45 minutes is the time frame okay now for example if gold actually goes long and it breaks through this area you know and it closes up here for example now the reason why we say wait is because you can most likely expect a retrace to come to this area, come back down here, and then proceed north, which is why it's probably the best to take your positions for a uh, um, retrace maybe for um, going any, in any direction. Naveen, could you briefly repeat how you trade the NFP? Sure, sure. Okay, now for the NFP, we do a couple of things. <coughs> um, you know, we, we check the daily charts. And once we check the daily charts, we want to check each previous candle. Okay. Um, the very first thing we want to do is check if the previous candle is the biggest of the month. Okay. And if it is, the tails, we can use the tails for um, analyzing. Okay. Usually, big candles, you can use their tails to analyze what the markets are going to do. And if the big tail, if the if there's a big candle with a small tail on top, uh, it's telling you the markets are gonna go long, and it's going to surpass the previous candle. So we see that if there's a there's a long candle and the market has not surpassed it. Uh, for example, let me show you on pound. See the last candle tells you long, and the current candle is still over here. It has not gone above it. So this is a long and it's pending. You want to collect all the things that are pending and stack them up. And the more you have pending, the more you have a sense of direction of which direction you're expecting the market to head. Does that make sense? Anyone lost? Lost a bit. Okay, let me let me give you an example from CAD. Okay, let's take a look at the one-hour CAD now. This last candle. Do you think this is a pretty big candle? Let me save my template and I will today. Okay, let me clean it up so you can see it properly. Okay. Okay, it's a pretty big candle, right? Okay, now, based on this big candle, what does this candle tell you? Which direction would the market go, long or short? Okay, short. Okay, so when we say short, we mean it wants to go beyond this area for it to go short. When the next candle opened, has it gone beyond this yet? No, this is what we call pending. It's still, the short is still pending. It needs to go short to fulfill and respect the previous candle. Okay, 
when you have big candles the tails will give you an indication that if the markets are going to go are going to go beyond the tail or up to the tail or to the middle of the tail depending on how big the tails are okay and then you stack up all the things that are pending to get a sense of direction which way you're headed uh, Pete, uh, Naveen, I thought you only use gold as an indicator and you didn't trade it. Um, yes, but uh, we have a lot of you guys who actually trade the NFP and stuff like that requested gold. This is the reason why we put in gold. So, I mean, I personally don't like trading gold, but it's what you guys want, so I'll give it to you guys. Okay, there you go. Now, you saw a CAD finally breaking through, coming through on this one. Now, let's take a look at gold. Is gold breaking through? Not yet. Still struggling for power over here. Euro yen, still there. New Zealand dollar going long now. Okay, looking like we are going above this area now, finally. Aussie dollar, okay. It's now trying to see if it, it can breach this area. Swiss franc, still there. CAD, we're good for a short. Pound, looking good for a long. Euro USD, obviously looking good for a long. Now, what can we do with our losing trades? I mean, we're not too much into a loss considering we have eight pairs running and there's only 90 pips down and one of them seems to be gold. So what do we do? Uh, Shri, if it does not cross, we have to monitor it. Will it bounce back from it? We need to uh, keep an eye on it. Okay, now for example, Aussie dollar. If Aussie dollar crosses above and it closes, then we want to wait for a retrace. Once the retrace happens, close out this position and head long for the day. Okay, same thing with uh, what is the other pair that we were watching. For those of you who have a long on CAD, since we've crossed this area, wait for this to close, retrace to this little area, and then sell close out your buys and then sell what else do we have gold if we cross above this area wait for it to retrace to this line then buy change your sense of direction okay and that way you will be able to jump in on the right direction for the rest of the day okay don't just close and open that Close and open at the spot where you're supposed to close and open the ideal retracement areas. Uh, some of our using FXI pivot points indicator, could you briefly talk about how that relates to today's trades? Um, well, I, DJ, we don't use um, the FXI um, uh, pivots on, on uh, the NFP at all. Uh, Pete, I don't think EU has got far to go on long. Okay, okay. Pete, uh, sorry, DJ, as opposed to a manual line. Well, a manual line is something that we're drawing based on what we see, right? Where do we go? Okay, New Zealand dollar also now officially has crossed. This is something also that I need to personally turn this around. Look at this big candle break, which means this area was powerful. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to mark these areas. Okay, once the market comes back down to this zone, I'm going to take it into a buy. Simple as that. All right, now. Yeah, the FXI pivots are good for pro trading. And it, it's a pivot point is the same thing as support and resistance. Only difference is it's mechanically created based on your server time. Okay. 
it, it cannot look at what you're looking at. It just uh, calculates based on what time should it start looking. You know? So you, you it has to be trained basically like so it's better to when you when you visually look at it you can cover both uh, uh, pivot pivot points also have one piece of line where um, in support resistance you can draw draw multiple lines and get an, get a zone okay will you wait for candle to close or closing positions above resistance yes yes I would have to wait for candle close I cannot tell until then because take a look at gold it hasn't closed yet so I can't really do much with it so in a way it's a good thing you get to sit relax you know what's the worst that can happen goes up to 200 oh this is one thing I want to bring up to you guys many of you guys ask me about stop losses okay and many of you guys watching my YouTube videos have tons of comments um, saying uh, regarding stop losses that uh, if it's there if it's not there you know, it, you're risking your equity and you're gonna, you know, it's gonna turn around and kill you. Well, let's explain this matter one by one, okay? First thing, if you're trading without a stop loss and a trade kills you, you're trading too big of a lot size. Stop. Lower your lot sizes if it's bothering you. Second thing, let me ask you this question. Does a bank ever deliberately look to make a loss okay has a bank ever come to your house and said listen uh, you don't have a good uh, credit history and you asked for ten thousand dollars of loan here's a million dollars enjoy no it doesn't do that you know it's not stupid so if you go to a bank any bank you go to you can go to your neighborhood bank and you take a look at their FX cross rates how much they're buying their euros and dollars and have you noticed that there's a big variation of approximately 200 300 pips based on uh, what you currently see on the market that variation is what the markets inside okay the markets are gonna stay in that and plus the banks still need to make a profit from within that variation by selling to you at whatever price okay they're not gonna you're not gonna see that bank is trying to sell uh, um, euro USD at uh, 1.3663 and then suddenly um, you know the rates have gone extremely extravagant where the banks like oh crap it doesn't happen like that the banks know what areas they can work with okay so same concept applies with stop losses. You can't, you know, when you go into a trading day, you're not expecting suddenly you to go from $1.36 to $10. Like, it doesn't happen. That should break your equity if you go from $1.36 to $10. Overnight market crashing like that. Okay? Again, this is not the stock market. Countries don't go bankrupt overnight. Okay. Even if their currencies fail, they fail 300 pips, 400 pips, 500 pips. You know, Merry Christmas. But that's about it. You don't you don't see a complete turnaround and, you know, death in the market. So, control your stop lot uh, control your lot sizes. So, whenever no matter how how well of a fluctuation you have in the day, you should be able to manage it. If it freaks you out, your your uh, Stop loss is way too big. Uh, your um, lot size is way too big, sorry. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand the concept? Okay, we're, we, we, we will do a webinar on uh, money management where we're going to discuss some techniques I use to uh, guard our exits for stops. Okay, because we trade in batches, we cannot use stop losses for individual pairs. We have to trade the market as a whole. So if I put a stop loss on one of these things, you know, there's a chance that one of these things can swing and close out while the rest are still running. Yeah, yeah. Just be patient with the market. You know, the market moves according to support and resistance areas. It swings in and out and in and out.
Okay. All right. So now in this particular case, now what do we need to do? Let's take a look at all of our NFP uh, trades here. Running at uh, 154 negative, 109 negative on gold. Um, let's take a look. Has gold crossed yet? No, not yet. Okay. Let's see. What what information do we have so far? Nothing on pound. Nothing on euro. Uh, CAD. We're officially short. Maybe I can pull in an additional position on uh, on CAD. Now, here's another area for CAD right here. We've also crossed this area. Okay, big candle break, big candle break, and resistance. We've crossed this area as well. Okay, now once it closes out here, we're gonna wait for a retracement and then go down. During the retracement, I can probably add in an additional position. Okay, rule of thumb: do not add in positions if you're not in profit at least 30 pips. In this particular case, I'm only up 17 pips, so I cannot do that. Okay, Swiss franc sideways. Yeah, so look, I'll I'll get to that right now. Swiss franc still sideways. No information yet. Okay, we're running pretty much at break even at two pips negative. So nothing there. Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar is now officially long. Okay. Once it closes, expect a retrace to somewhere around here in this range. Yep, somewhere around here. And that's where you're going to be taking long and closing out this cell and taking it long. New Zealand dollar. Same scenario. Once it's closed out, expect a retracement somewhere on this area. Now, when you're expecting a retracement on these pairs, if either one of the pairs reach first, Aussie dollar or New Zealand dollar, trade them both. Chances are they're going to start moving together. Okay? Because they're both going the same direction now. Euro yen, nothing there. Very, very tight sideline. And gold turning around from here. So, things are still okay. We're only 150 some pips. Okay, when you trade for the rest of the day, you usually end up with 300, 400 pips in your pocket. You know, we've done average 1,000, 1,500 pips coming up with the NFP going into um, the following week. But just make sure you, you, you change your directions and everything properly and you pick your side. It's fine. Okay, so do we have a sense of direction now? Do you think the market has settled? Does it feel like it's settled? Is my um, uh, profit and loss uh, fluctuating too hard now? Six minutes to candle close. Yes, pound seems like it's going to try to, try to make a run for it. Now, if pound is going down, is it going to take down Euro USD as well? I don't know. CAD just crossed below. Why is that not correlating? That's confusion there. Swiss franc. Swiss franc still hovering. Uh, when do you close your positions? I actually just leave them running. I come back on Monday, and even if it drops down a little bit with a gap, the gap fills up anyways, so nothing to worry about. You come in on Monday, you take a look at your positions. I let them run throughout the day because um, I, one of my traders have taught me that uh, um, based on statistics, once the NFP dust settles down, um, the market's going to stick to that position for the rest of, uh, rest of the day. This is something that one of the traders have taught me, which is kind of cool, good information. Uh, is it possible to post shots of the screens on Urban Forex? I uh, would like to copy the support and resistance areas. Um, you can actually take a screenshot of the screen right now. If you want, you can tell me what, what pair you want to see and just take a screenshot of your own screen. Uh, Eleanor, correlations have not been working yet. Yeah, lately, the correlations have been off, which is one of the reasons why we've redone our forecast, as you can see. Um, you know, we've, we've completely redone our forecast on Forex Watchers to adjust to the current market situations. Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, please. Okay, here is Aussie dollar.
All right, here is New Zealand dollar. Four minutes to candle close. All right, I'm gonna go through one by one. I'm gonna go to uh, Euro USD. Um, will you do webinar on support resistance trading strategy? That must be powerful. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. We'll do one coming up soon. In fact, we even have uh, Sardar coming up to do some uh, webinars with you guys also with uh, some of his analysis. So I know there's a lot of uh, requests for that as well. And I did talk to him and he is willing to do some webinars for you guys. So that's gonna be coming up as well. Okay, what would you do with pound? Same thing with pound. If pound crosses below, I'm going to go to pound screen now. If pound crosses below, obviously we're going to have to short. Market profile is next week, next Wednesday, okay, which is what, February 5th, I think, or 6th. We have the market profile webinar. We'll discuss a little bit about everything, like the history of market profile and... Um, how how to use it, you know, what does it mean, plus if there's any trading strategies around it, stuff like that. We might even, uh, we're going to mix uh, support and resistance with uh, uh, MP. Atsushi, no internship this week? No, unfortunately not this week. We got our hands tied. Um, and we will release the... I think uh, beginning of next week or middle of next week, I would say. Okay, there's US dollar CAD. So, look, can you please sum up the gold situation okay okay I'm, I'm gonna go little by little I'm gonna go to Swiss franc now for the screenshot how to sign up for the Forex watchers conference Renee um, you can just go to forexwatchers.com and everything is right there okay now the conference room is only held on Wednesdays okay I no longer do them every day I do them on Wednesdays with all the members we trade together pretty much Okay, and if you guys need a sample of how the conference room looks, just request it from Samira. She'll give you a recent conference room recording so you guys can take a look. Okay, moving on to Euro Yen. Um, if you're asking about the conference rooms, we start at pretty much uh, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and we trade for three hours or four hours, something like that. Usually two to four hours in that range. Give you a quick, quick recap for the day, you know, what, what needs to happen, this and that. And if there's anything to learn, um, it's taught there first. And then it comes to Urban Forex a little bit later. Okay, and candles have closed. Let's take a look at gold now. Now uh, the gold scenario, um, what was it, uh, Sonic? You had the gold scenario question. Yes, if gold, we actually cross above, we wanna look to retrace to this area. Now, gold, you cannot um, trade now on gold. You have to wait for another hour until the candle closes to get a proper idea. Are we above this area? And if we are, you're gonna, you need a retracement to this. To this zone or the to the nearest zone that it uh, that it reaches most likely it's going to be in this range okay and then you would go long from there in fact let me check my other the trades we took from forecasts okay any questions so far
Kang, can we possibly get a free trial access to conference room for like three days? Uh, Kang, are you are you in uh, the internship program? I think because uh, the first uh, 150 or some people that were on the internship got actually are going to be getting accesses to the Forex Watchers uh, area. Naveen, do you always trade that many pairs on NFP? Yes, always, always. Um, we've traded almost all the time this many pairs on NFP, except gold. Okay, Gold is something I've just added. You know, and it's obviously not good, but uh, I just wanted to show sense of direction with gold also. Okay, direction for the rest of the day is long. Uh, sushi, yes. Um, if you're asking about Forex Watchers, yes. <clears throat> Everything will be uh, um, summed up by next week, and uh, people will start getting notified, all the people in the internship program, that uh, you guys can now come over to Forex Watchers for like a couple of weeks and. Uh, um, use the forecast, use some uh, conference room trainings there, and stuff like that. Okay, Euro USD still looks long there. Pound is still long. Okay, CAD is retracing for a short. Swiss franc, no idea. It's a uh, sidelines. If your USD is long, pound, uh, Swiss franc is probably short. Aussie dollar is now long. Wait for a retracement and then uh, long from there. New Zealand dollar. Wait for a retracement and long from there. Euro yen. Possibly long also. And then gold. Uh, can't say quite yet. Gold is giving these three big um, breaks now. So there is a level of support that's um, that's just been made, you know. We have this area here, I believe. It's a strong area here. So even if it cannot cross to the north, it also also has a chance it cannot cross to the bottom. So we need to wait and see. Pound is back to your forecast blue zone. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the day. It's 10.03 p.m. my time. It's 9.03 a.m. New York City time. Everyone gets the sense of direction in the market now, and you guys have your trading plans on what needs to be done. Um, how soon will this NFP video be up on YouTube? Um, I'll have it to you guys up in 24 hours. Okay, you guys can thank uh, um, the teammates. We have Donnie in our team. We have Abhinav in our team now at Urban Forex. We have James. So we have all, all these people now have joined us. Sardar is with us now also. So everyone is helping out at Urban Forex. So have a great night, guys. Thanks for attending. I'll see you guys on Wednesday.